Hi everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. Really Big Plant. For this video, we are going to be taking a look at a whole bunch of trash plants, plant rescues that I have brought home from the plant store that I currently work in. So I work part-time in a plant shop and I've been working in plant stores part-time for the past few years. I have made a habit of bringing lots of these kind of plants home. So let's start with this big fiddly fig tree here that I've been working on for the past couple of months. brought home a rescue tree. Started dropping leaves and then it didn't look good enough to be on display and it sat in the dark for a couple of weeks and finally when it looked bad enough that it wasn't worth any money at all, <laughs> my boss let me take it home. So now I've got this tree and we're gonna do our best to revive it. I think I'm gonna just probably cut like all of the leaves off. It's in a 10 inch pot and it's got some nice branching on it. It looks like the tips of the branches on this plant are largely dead. I'm probably gonna prune it back. For now, I'm just letting this recover a little bit. I just watered it earlier this morning and I'm letting it just hang out in the middle of this space over here to get some much needed light. Haven't even washed it yet because I'm gonna take all of the leaves off soon. Some of them I think are still probably functional for the plant um, in terms of being like a solar panel that helps the plant um, produce energy to survive. So I'm gonna leave the leaves on for a little bit. We'll see if we can revive it over the next couple months. Welcome, fiddle leaf fig. I hope you don't die. <laughs> <laughs> off some of them are hanging in there <laughs> this fiddle leaf has one leaf left on each branch it's pretty funny looking it's a total like charlie brown christmas tree a lot of times when you want to revive a tree like this if the ends of the branches have started to die what you want to do is you want to prune back the branches to a point where you see green on the inside of the twig okay i was just picking at the end of this branch and i broke off the leaf bud by accident, which is what you do actually when you want to, um, what's the term? I don't know why I can't think of the word. It's like not anything that fancy, but anyway, this is one of the things that you do that uh, people recommend to, for fiddle leaf fig trees when you want them to branch. You just take the new growth when you see that bud developing, the little tiny thing, and just twist it off. Um, and it usually encourages branching. So I think I guess that counts for this branch already because I see that all of this sap is welling up here. It's um, like a latex sap. It's what latex is made from, rubber, which is why ficus are called rubber trees because they produce this sap that makes rubber. Wash your hands after you get it on your skin. I think I'm gonna just cut these ugly leaves off then. So this branch is not really shriveled, but this branch is shriveled up at the end. So I'm gonna cut it back. This branch also looks kind of shriveled at the top to me. So I'm gonna cut this one back too. fingers crossed for this tree 
tree. <laughs> about two and a half months since I brought this tree home and it's put out a lot of new growth. So disappointingly, it hasn't grown on all of the branches like I thought it would. So what I wanna do now is see what's going on with these two bare branches and see if I can prune them back again and trigger some more growth on it. It branched from the trunk rather than from these other branches. A lot of times on a leafless plant that has kind of like woody stems, stems that are brown. You can test to see if the plant is still alive, even though there are no leaves, by kind of scraping gently on the bark. You can scrape on the branches and see if there's green underneath. And when I try on these dead looking branches, there's no green. Um, and there's definitely green underneath on the, on the branches that are growing. Um, but sometimes I've noticed that with ficus, even if there isn't green right at the surface, if you cut the branch back to where it starts leaking sap, it means that it's still part of the plant's like active vascular network and there are juices still flowing through that part of the plant. So it's possible that it could still grow. So what I like to do in this case I've done this with a couple of ficus. Um, I just start chopping the branch back little by little until I see if maybe there's some, some moisture in there. All right, sad, so this branch is a goner. All right, so sadly, neither of those two dead branches had any life left in them. I really thought that maybe they would, but I guess not, so. Here's what we're working with, a two-branched tree. Um, this lower branch here that has the new growth on it has actually branched itself in a couple of places, um, and there are three branches growing from this one now. So this is going to be interesting. This tree is changing form, and I think that eventually this tree should be a really interesting shape, and I'm hoping that it's going to look kind of cool. To anybody who has struggled with their ficus or if your ficus drops all of its leaves, my advice is don't throw it out. Water it when the soil gets dry and keep it somewhere where it's getting some light and eventually, hopefully, you should get new growth on your plant. I'm really excited to have this ficus and we'll see what happens with it. I was watering this one about once every like two weeks or so, maybe a little bit longer than that. I was making sure that the soil was definitely getting pretty dry between waterings because when a plant doesn't have many leaves on it, it's much more susceptible to rot because it just doesn't have a lot of plant material to be using the water for photosynthesis and growing. Um, so just make sure that if you are rehabbing a ficus with very few leaves on it, when you do water it, water it. You know, you want to get that root system wet, water it thoroughly, but do let it dry between waterings. And I think it's well, it's always important on fiddle leaf fig trees, on ficus, but especially if they're mostly defoliated, you really want to err on the side of less frequent watering just so that you don't rot the trunk. This Diffenbachia camo, which is in an eight inch pot, I've got to pay $5 for the trash plants now. So I did pay for this plant and it's got three stalks in here and I know that this is going to be a big, beautiful plant someday. So I'm really excited for this. Um, this had been living in the store for a really long time and had kind of started to look bad and honestly I was really happy when I did see that this got moved into the trash pile because uh, 
<laughs> I think that it's gonna be great. I like bringing home plants that have been in the plant store for a really long time because I actually think that those plants tend to do really well once I bring them home. And my theory about why that is, is that those plants have already been acclimated to kind of subpar lighting. I'm really hoping that it's gonna be beautiful someday. Um, one of the canes is like pretty defoliated and is like withering down to nothing, but there is a new leaf that grew out of it since I brought it home. And this middle cane has a new leaf growing. Um, this third one over here is kind of sad and is starting to shrivel a little bit, so I don't know what's going to happen with it, but um, I'm pretty sure this plant should be able to survive and grow into something. So this is a Alocasia Lauderbachiana, the purple sword Alocasia, and it's really cool. It doesn't even look like an Alocasia to me. It reminds me of um, like a philodendron jungle boogie. The leaves on it are really interesting, and this is another plant that I think had been in the shop for since before I got hired, um, but it was much bigger at one point and it started to kind of just die off. You know, alocasias don't do super well in plant stores because they really want really bright indirect light and when they start getting squished up next to other plants, I think they tend to not really get the light that they need and so it can be really hard for an alocasia that's been around for a while to find a forever home. A couple weeks ago I went into the shop and I saw that someone had set this aside for employee purchasing so I bought it and I brought it home and it's already putting out a new leaf so I'm really excited about this one. The day that I bought this it was pouring and I wasn't sure if I wanted to try to bring this plant home but I ended up walking home in the rain with it so some serious dedication went into bringing home this trash plant. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out whether or not I think that this is partially rotten, but I'm letting the soil dry all the way out and the base is a little bit mushy, but I think that's because it had a bunch of leaves die off recently. And if you have experience with alocasia, you know that the base of the plant forms a bulb, but it's surrounded by the sort of like the sheath of each leaf kind of wraps around the bulb a little bit. And when you cut a leaf off, there'll be residual bits of the stem attached and they get really mushy and kind of gross and it can make the whole plant feel like it's rotten when you feel the stem but a lot of times it's actually not that inner core that's rotten it's just some of the outer leaves okay and then the other thing i want to do is prune off this yellow leaf So I just noticed it looks like this might actually have some spider mites, so I'm going to just treat it with a little neem oil. This is some uh, a neem oil solution that I mixed up not that long ago and just have it ready to go and I'm just going to spray down this leaf. It's really easy to <laughs> treat a plant when it only has one leaf, so I'm just going to do it right now. Okay, <laughs> so treated that and I'm gonna let the neem oil dry on there. The way neem oil works is that it coats the pests and it kind of, it's, it suffocates them. It stops them from being able to breathe and it plugs up all of their little bug pores and they die. I don't know if there were actually spider mites on here or if it was just a little bit of residual webbing. If you've been watching my channel, I've been having some spiders in my apartment. This to me also kind of looked like it had maybe normal spider webs on it, not spider mite webbing. Um, this hasn't been in my apartment for that long, but it was in the plant store for a long time and it's not unusual for there to be normal spiders there too. I actually don't think that these were spider mites, but it's always safe to just use a little neem oil. All right, so I've got a bunch of other stuff here that is... <laughs> I mean, they look like plants that I pulled out of the trash, okay? But I am going to just show you some of the things that I've got here. So let's see. I'll... <laughs> I'll start with this. There's no plant here. I need to throw this away. Um, this was a philodendron lemon lime. It had three leaves on it and I thought it was going to be recoverable, so I paid five dollars for it, um, but it died. <laughs> so 
I have tried multiple times to rescue philodendron lemon lime or is it philodendron moonlight? I think it's philodendron moonlight. None of them have made it. And I don't know if these philodendron moonlight are just not as healthy or a little bit more finicky than other types of philodendron, but in my experience that definitely seems to be the case because I have yet to be able to successfully rehab one of these. This is just a little jar of water propagations that I have going that kind of has pretty quick turnover. I stick stuff in here and then all the water gets gross and I throw out like most of the things and then put new cuttings in here. And a lot of the things in here I never actually pot up. I just have like a jar that sits around that has some pretty things in it, but um, you know, I, I don't have any shortage of plants over here, so I don't really need to pot up little cuttings. There have been a couple of times recently where I've gone into work and have found some little propagations that have been left. I think it's just so sweet that my coworkers have left me some little cuttings. It's honestly my love language. This is a little cutting of a Sansevieria fernwood that I found on the top of the compost bin one day when I went in. So that's really cute. And um, this little Maranta leaf here, which is in pretty good shape and is propagatable because it has a node on there um, was something that was left on the counter too, wrapped up in a little paper towel and it was so cute and I felt so happy when I found it. So I've got that. And then in here there's also just some philodendron Brazil cuttings and this type of begonia that I'm actually not sure what it is. I'm hoping that it can propagate. I don't know. I'm not really a begonia person. I have very few begonias. I think the begonia maculata whitey eye might be the only one that I have, but um, I thought this leaf was pretty and it was looking really healthy when I found it. Here's some little philodendron Brazil pieces that I can't remember what happened with these. I think maybe some plants got tangled together and this ripped off of the plant, but these will grow. I am pretty sure of it. Philodendron Brazil propagate from the trash really easily in my experience. I've actually never paid for Philodendron Brazil and I have a lot of them. Oh, actually that's not true. Um, I got one once and then my husband took it into work right away because it was so perfect looking and beautiful and he put it on his desk and it does well there. But all of my other Philodendron Brazils that I have are accumulated trash cuttings from over many years of working in plant stores and yeah I actually have a good quantity of philodendron Brazil that always started off as just like tiny little cuttings like this and have grown into much larger plants and then this is a little um a rickrack cactus an epiphyllum I don't remember what what happened with this you know I, I work four days a week in the plant shop and there's a lot of cleaning and moving things around and you just find random bits of plants all over the place. And I bring home lots of little cuttings that never actually turn into anything because I just don't do anything with them. I'm like, oh, I'll rescue this one too. But then I come home and I just don't even care. You know, I'm like, got other stuff to do when I get home and forget about the tiny little plants that were from the garbage can. And I do kind of separate them into bins of like plants that look really bad and plants that look kind of nice. This is my jar of like kind of nice looking cuttings that I think just looks pretty to have on the table. Um, I usually also have a bowl or another cup that is like slimy and disgusting and full of like rotting, super yucky cuttings that I'm trying to rehab. But I recently just threw out my slime bowl because it had gotten too gross and most of the things in there weren't doing well. So I just tossed it, but um, <laughs> I do have this. This is just, I just keep this pot around so that when I'm feeling really lazy, I just put things right on top of the soil and see if they root. And most of the things just like spend a few days on the top of this pot and then get thrown out. This, uh, <laughs> this was a watermelon peperomia piece and I don't know if it's gonna grow, but I shoved it in here. Um, this was a mostly dead Skindapsis pictus that had some roots. So I planted it into this pot, but I don't think this is gonna make it either. Um, although, you know, there's some green on here. Maybe I'll just cut that back. <laughs> okay, I don't need this. These are some pothos. I can't remember what kind of pothos they were. I think they were enjoy pothos chunks. We prune the plants a lot to cut off the ends that look yucky and sometimes I'll keep those yucky ends. So these were the ends from some kind of pothos but it looks like they've shriveled up and aren't really doing anything. Uh, this succulent, I don't even know. I found this on the floor. 
a lot of these pieces in this bowl were things that were from the ground so it's kind of gross and then there's um string of hearts cuttings over the past few months i found a couple of string of hearts pieces on the ground when sweeping up and so i'll take those and plop them on top of this bowl and it does look like some of the string of hearts are actually growing those tend to propagate really well from just sitting on the surface of the soil uh, i've got this piece of azizi raven leaf in here which <laughs> okay don't get too upset at me all of the plants in this bowl have really different watering requirements but i <laughs> I don't really care. I think it's okay. I'm just gonna leave them in here and if any of them grow, it's a miracle. Actually, you know what? I've got, so I've got these other ZZ pieces. These are the most recent plants that I brought home just last week. Last time I worked, there were some damaged leaves on the ZZ plant, so I brought some of those home, um, the best looking ones, in hopes that I could maybe propagate them. So maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this <laughs> ZZ raven leaf very sad ZZ raven leaf and plant it together with these other two ZZ leaves and see if they do anything. This is a little pot. I painted some clouds on it a long time ago. I feel like it's cute on the light blue pots. Do some clouds. But um, yeah, I just put some soil in here and I am going to stick these ZZ leaves in. You might have noticed that your ZZ plant, if you've gotten one kind of recently, has little leaves sticking out of the soil. And that is because they are propagatable by just a single leaf like this. And the plant that you bought probably was propagated from the leaves that are sticking up out of the soil. So if you ever notice that those leaves turn yellow first and are dying off, that's totally normal because it's the original propagation. So you can just pull them out of the soil usually. Okay, that is cute. So I've got this well, what was a philodendron micans once, there's not much plant left in this pot. And <laughs> this definitely wasn't sellable anymore. So I brought this home. It's really dry, it needs some water. And I do have some other little micans pieces that I found. I'm gonna just stick them into this pot too and then give the whole thing some water. so dry all of the water is just immediately running right through the pot so if you ever notice that that's happening when you're watering your plants it means that you probably need to bottom water them as in just like let them sit in some standing water for a few minutes um so that the soil can actually absorb some water kind of like when you're getting a really really dry sponge wet for the first time it doesn't like immediately soak up water i've got this <laughs> This is a Alocasia nebula imperialis. These leaves are dead. They're, they're not supposed to be brown. They're supposed to be like silver green, like a really dark, dark green, bluish green leaf. Um, this plant is obviously dead. It was originally 90 something dollars in the shop and it looked really beautiful when we first got it in, but it took a turn for the worse pretty quickly. And I don't know, I just, the alocasias, again, usually just somehow don't do super well in plant stores, especially when they're kind of small and when they're like the rare ones. I spent like a whole day trying to offer this plant to people for $5. Um, it was looking better than this. It had two green leaves on it still that were sad, but still alive, but no one wanted it. So I ended up buying it for $5. I brought it home, but I don't really know if this one is gonna make it. Um, I think it's growing a new leaf, but I don't know. And then let's take a look at another alocasia I have. So this is an alocasia Hilo Beauty. Um, it's a variety from Hawaii and they've been really popular recently in the store. But this is one that I actually found in the compost and I filmed a repotting of this and showing this plant as part of the last plant chores video that I did, but I ended up cutting it out.
I did remember something horrifying <laughs> that I need to take care of right now. I put this into my backpack that I carry with me back and forth to work and I've gone back and forth several times since and this bag sort of migrated into the bottom of my backpack and I just completely forgot that it was in there. Um, and now I just remembered today that I've got this and I decided to go look for it and it's disgusting. It's completely covered in mold. It's, it's, it's really gross in here, but, but it's also sprouting a new leaf. So yeah, it's been like a little over a week since I potted this up and the new leaf has emerged and I think it's looking really cute now and yeah, I'm really glad that I pulled this out of the compost because it doesn't seem to have anything wrong with it. So now I've got this plant and I'm really excited to have it. Let's see, what else? It's a little Maranta Lucanura and my plan is to eventually pot that one up with this cutting if it ever roots. Oh, this is so cute. This is another... <laughs> propagation that was left for me by one of my co-workers I went into the shop and left on the table sitting there was a little post-it note that said propagate me and this tiny little peperomia frost piece was sitting on the post-it note so I brought that home and stuck it into this bottle of water So that was about two weeks ago now, and it's already grown a tiny new leaf. In this jar, I've got some Sansevieria, uh, Sansevieria propagations. So these were some pieces that had kind of like fallen off of a bird's nest Sansevieria. It looks like there's one rotten one here. Um, these I actually had stuck them into the side pocket of my backpack. I think they were in my backpack for several weeks in my cup pocket that I kept using and jamming my thermos down into the pocket on top of these. So they got totally like squished and they're very soft and their integrity is really kind of destroyed because I squished them a lot. This one didn't make it, but these ones have been in water for a while and they haven't mushed yet. So I think maybe they actually might grow. And then this is a gross tip of a Sansevieria Laurentii that I also have in there, but it's already rooting, so. <sighs> Got these snake plant propagations. Oh. This is from a Sansevieria Zelanica that was shut in the door. <laughs> And when I got to work one day, I noticed that it was closed into the front door of the shop, so I had to cut this leaf off. So this is just a normal snake plant leaf, but the remarkable thing about this is that I cut this leaf off of the snake plant in, I believe, early January, and it is now almost May. So this plant, January, February, March, April, has been out of water and detached from a snake plant and just has been sitting as this cut cutting with a squished end for about four months in my apartment in a low light area and it's kind of shriveling up but it's not dead and I'm pretty sure that this is gonna grow if I try to propagate it and give it some water so I am just going to take this and stick it into this vase with my other propagations finally and it's probably gonna be fine and then I've got this really long Sansevieria Laurentii piece that I have because um, a couple weeks ago, a customer got kind of tangled up with one of the snake plants and one of the leaves got really bent at the base. So I cut it up and I brought it home. I was looking for a jar that was tall enough to support, support this leaf without falling over because it is kind of heavy. So I've got this vase that was from my elopement photo shoot and I'm just gonna stick this leaf in here. <laughs> oh. Huh. 
Darn. Okay, I thought this was gonna be able to go into this vase more than like an inch, but <laughs> maybe this is just gonna be the funniest thing ever. It's <laughs> it's almost my height in here. <laughs> okay, this is a bad idea because it's so um, tight around the base of the leaf that if it does ever try to grow a pup, um, it won't really be able to because it's gonna get squished in this face. But I have so many snake plants that I don't really feel like it's any loss to put this plant in a situation where it won't really be able to grow that well. It's kind of a funny idea, a single snake plant leaf in a really tall vase. It's like a, <laughs> a really interesting vertical element if you need something extremely skinny and tall. <laughs> Or, oh, maybe a whole collection of these would be really cool. I have a couple more of these vases. Maybe I'll cut some more snake plant leaves and put them in a group like this. That would be a really cool centerpiece, wouldn't it? Like a bunch of really tall vases with single snake plant leaves in them. Let's see if I can just show you just how long this is by turning it sideways. It's like my wingspan. <laughs> And then the last thing I should show you is this funny little bottle that I've got going on right now with a tiny air plant in it. So <laughs> when I was sweeping up in the shop the other day, I noticed in the dustpan that I swept up a tiny little plantlet and I think it's an air plant baby. And I put it into this bottle with some rocks and a little bit of water at the bottom and closed the lid on the top so that it has some humidity. I don't know if an air plant baby that small can survive on its own, but to give it its best shot, I'm putting it in a really humid environment to see if it can grow. This is an experiment. I, I have a feeling that this is gonna die, but it's so cute in here for now and it's self-sustaining because it is a little terrarium. So I figured I might as well give this a try. All right, everyone, this has been a fun video. Thank you for indulging me while I show you all of my trash plants like Oscar the Grouch. I just think it's so fun to be able to revive plants. You know, some people have plants because they like them as a design element and because it's a very aesthetic thing. And I think other people have plants because they are fascinated by the biology and the mechanisms of life. And it's less of an aesthetic thing and more of a fascination. And for me, I definitely fall into that fascination camp. Um, I love plants for the aesthetic as well. But for me, what keeps me coming back to plants is the miracles that they produce. Sometimes being able to grow from nothing or growing out of the trash can or growing in all different types of environments and really pushing plants to their limit and seeing what they're capable of is just something that I find really fascinating. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I would love to hear from you on what some of your struggle plants are that you were trying to revive these days or what your most successful plant rescue story is. Those are always so heartwarming. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having a really great week and that your plants are bringing you joy and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.